give it a second to think. Okay, it says we're recording. So it is the 16th of January and we are on week two of Step It Up to Success. And we're going to talk about bookings tonight and the master of bookings, Ms. Mary Weber, is here with us tonight. She's also known as the Yellow, Be Yellow Beetle Pampered Chef Lady. And at some point in time, she'll have to share that story. Um, she's on Beetle number two and they are the same Yellow Beetle. It's hilarious, but that is Mary. Um, she is an advanced director from Cudahy, Wisconsin. 16-year veteran with Pampered Chef. She has over half a million in career sales. She's recruited 63 new consultants and qualified 47 of those. Mary currently has 48 consultants in her organization, 20 in her personal line, 16 in her first generation, and 12 in her second. An almost empty nester, Mary has been married to Mark for 34 years, and they've got two grown sons, Tristan and Devin. Often doing as many as eight events a month, in addition to her cooking catalog and virtual shows. So when it comes to business, Mary's motto is book your brains out. And from that, I'm going to let her take it from here. Hi, everyone. Um, I think the biggest thing when everybody becomes a consultant, and I've heard it before, is um, why don't people come to me because don't they know I'm in the Pampered Chef business? Well, you know what? You need to promote yourself, and the best way to do that is through your bookings. Um, I'm going to be putting up a lot of slides tonight for you, so... Um, you know, get your pens and pencils out, write like crazy, or you can always reach out to me after and I can share the slides with you. So let's get into it. Why won't this, there we go. The bottom line is bookings are the life or death of our business. If you've got bookings, you're great, you're golden, and if not, you're dead. So where are we gonna get them? For the purposes of this presentation, I'm gonna discuss primarily three. I'm not really gonna go into virtual shows. Um, that might be for another time. But the three places that you wanna be looking for your bookings is at your shows. I'm going to tell you about how to do it in events, and then we're gonna look at out and about. Um, oops, 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 I'm gonna slide ahead here. Why won't my mouse work? Okay, um, have any of you seen this chart before? Okay, um, well, here's the thing. If you look at this side, the um, left side, um, if you get two bookings every month or every show that you do, you're always going to be perpetuating your business. So if you look at this left-hand side, this consultant started out with, sh with six shows. They had two cancellations, so the bottom line was that they had four shows that were held. They got two bookings from each one of those shows. So at the end of the month, that consultant walked out with eight shows going into the next month. The next month, she walked in with those eight shows, but again, two shows canceled on her. So she only had six shows held. But again, we got those two bookings. So at the end of the month, there were 12 shows. When she goes into the third month, she's got the 12 shows, two cancellations. So there's still 10 shows that are held. So you see the way that's perpetuating itself with the two shows, two shows, two shows. Now go on over to the right-hand side. And now this is a consultant who is only doing one booking. So started out with the same six shows as the consultant on the left, two cancellations, four shows held. So now with only getting one booking from each of those four shows, this consultant went into the next month with only four shows. Now. Again, two cancellations. And we know, especially at this time of year, it's very easy to get those cancellations. So what happened was only two shows were held. Again, only one booking from each show. So went into that last month with two shows. Oh, but what happened? Two cancellations, no shows in the third month. Basically, that consultant's got to start rebuilding or that consultant is out of business. So... Two bookings from every show, no matter what. Now, I try to make everything that I take with me, use at a show, out on the street, wherever I am, I try to make everything work for me. And this is actually one of my show folders. And I've kind of done a close-up for you here. And if you look at this left-hand side, essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying, thanks for coming to our party. The first thing I want to do is I want to generate someone who's going to be contacting me. So the first thing I do is I ask them to add my cell phone or my number to their cell phone. 
and I have them put it in as Pampered Chef Mary Weber. Because you are not going to remember Mary Weber. You are not going to remember, they are not going to remember your first name, but they're going to remember they want something from Pampered Chef. So have them put in that number. Then typically what I will do at a show is I'm very big on giving away things at my shows. Whether it's a tiny Twixit clip, whether it's a recipe card, whatever it is, be free with your tchotchkes at your shows because you're going to generate a lot of interest. You're going to generate a lot of activity. So the first person who calls me on my cell phone during that show, they get a free prize. Um, I also ask them um, if they're on Facebook and I ask them to friend me. And you know what? I got my phone right there and it pings when the first one to friend me on Facebook comes through. So they get a, a recipe card or a little prize. And then what I ask them to do is I ask them to post on Facebook. I'm at a Pamper Chef party. Does anyone need anything? Because now we are reaching out to that broader community. I'm no longer reaching out to the six or eight or 10 or 12 or 15 people that are around the table at my hostess's house. But now I've completely broadened my audience to all of the people that they know. And I also award a nice prize if uh, somebody that you called places an order that's $75 or more. Because now I just got a $75 order from someone who wasn't even at that show. And that hostess just benefited from an additional $75 order. So you, you know, make a copy of this, use this, feel free. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. You guys are welcome to pick up your cameras if you have them on your phones with you and take pictures of any of these slides too, just briefly if you need to. Okay, now um, the inside of the folder. I also make this work for me. On this right here, and it's shown on there, this is my magnetic business card. The first thing I do when I bring them in here, as I said, I will tell them, this is a magnetic business card. If you don't already have a Pamper Chef consultant that you know and love, I would love to be yours. I'm not going to poach another consultant's uh, uh, host or guest or customer, but if you don't already have someone, I'd love to be yours. Please take my uh, business card. All of my information is on this business card, but there's this magical place right on the bottom, and that's where my um, website is. And that's where I lead them to the uh, outlet because everybody loves outlets. They love deals. And I always finish that conversation with seriously, is it like just the best thing ever to be a hostess or what? Because now I just brought home that that hostess is getting an additional discount. I mean, is it fabulous to be a hostess or what? My God, we just, you know, we give our hostesses just amazing things. So now let's go to the next one. Make your catalog work for you. And what I tell them on this one is, have you ever been to a mall and you're walking through the mall and you're stopping at one of the mall stores, where do they keep the best deals? It's always at the back of the store. That's where the closeouts are. That's where the sale racks are. That's where all the good stuff is, is in the back of the store. So basically what I tell them is, you know what? Consider this your kitchen mall, because mall store, because actually what we do is we keep all of our best sales on the back of our catalog. I will walk them through the business opportunity very quickly and I will walk them through the um, show hosting opportunity. So now I've planted two or three little bugs in their ear as far as booking a show. I haven't come right out and said, hey, you need to book, but I have posted or made them aware of the fact that, you know, bookings are there and that they can get great deals. And one of the things that I will always say is that, you know, my hostesses on average get about $165 to $240 worth of free product. Can you imagine um, Michelle Lee if, you know, I handed you a catalog and said, hey, please pick out $240 in free product. I can't imagine that you would turn that down. Terry, Dave, Terry Peterson, if I told you, hey, take uh, three or four or five half price items, I can't imagine you saying no, 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 no. Especially when I know that most of you would kill for a 30% off coupon to Kohl's. 
so there you go. You know, when you position it that way, and, and boy, it's a great deal, a lot of people are going to jump on that. Um, work your prize slip. And this is the prize slip that I use. Um, at the end of my show, I've walked them through several different uh, booking opportunities before that. During the course of the show, I might say, hey, this is a quick cooker. Do you know that this is um, one of my specials this month or you can get it for 60% off? How would you like to get this for, you know, $114 for this whole set? You know, I will do all of those things. Uh, but then I actually walk through them on the uh, prize slip and I work it at every show. I go over it with them as they are filling it out. I personally do multiple drawings and how I do that is I will have my hostess pick the first name and then let's just say that Kara was my winner at that first, on that first drawing. So she gets a prize. And then what I will tell her is, okay, Kara, you've got a major decision to make. You need to tell me if I am stopping drawing right now or if I should pull another name out of the hat so we have another winner tonight. And I will play that game with them right until the end and then I'll say at the very end when I've got two uh, uh, slips in the uh, bucket, I'll say, you know what, I got a really good feeling, you know, 50-50 chance here you're going to win. And then the uh, second from the last person has to make the ultimate decision. Is she going to stiff the last person or are we going to pull that last ticket? And it's usually, you know, everybody is just having fun with it. And it's just like, no, don't do it. Yeah, do it. No, don't do it. Either way, that last person's going to get a, a, a ticket. So um, no matter when you do collect these tickets and you've got them, you know, in your checkout area, I don't care what they said to you. I don't care if everything on here says, no, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. You ask absolutely everybody if they're interested in hosting when you do your full service checkout. Now here's something that I do. I don't let them know that I looked at their slip ahead of time, but what I will tell them, you know, if they say, well, I put on that slip that, you know, I wasn't interested. And I said, you know what? I really didn't look at the slip, but I just need to share with you. When I was a new consultant, I was kind of overwhelmed. I had a big show and, you know, the line got long and I, I just got overwhelmed. And I neglected to ask one of the guests if they would like to host a show. And so she had mentioned to the hostess that she thought Mary didn't like her because I had apparently asked everyone else but her. And I said, you know, I never wanted anybody to feel badly. It was just that I was overwhelmed. And so that's why I didn't ask this lady if she would like a, a show. So I will look at every guest at that table and say, I will ask every one of you because I don't ever want any of you to feel that I don't, you know, want you to host or that I don't respect you or your business or anything like that. So I'm going to ask everybody. So now I have just set them up and they're ready for me to ask them. So there you go. Um, if, you, if an entry came from an event, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later, but you make sure that you follow up on every entry, or if somebody has filled out one of your entries and then they've left your show and gone home early, you continue to make sure that you follow up with them either way. Um, work your show, your receipt, and your full service checkout. Um, the reason we have two ears and one mouth is that we can listen more and talk less. So you keep your ear, listening ears on for red flags. Um, I often will have other consultants come with me to a show and it's not unusual for that new consultant to say, you know, Mary, I can't believe those people were talking all during your show and you didn't say anything. Well, the first thing I tell them is number one, always let them talk because someone around that table whom they have never laid eyes on before will sell their products to that individual more, sooner than you will. And I said, and did you listen to what they were saying? They were talking about products. They were talking about, oh, I've got this at home, or I've got that at home, or I bought this for my niece, or whatever it was. And I said, so I let them talk. And I said, and I will always tell them, it's a party. I'm not here to be the school teacher and keep silence. Let's just talk. Let's have a good time. And let's go from there. So now I have a little scenario here that Susie Shopper was a great guest. She oohed and odd at everything. She loved everything. When she saw the quick cooker, she almost wet her pants. But yet when she came out to do her full service checkout with me, her order only totaled about $35.
Now, one of the things that I do is I'm always very conversational with my guests and with my hostesses. So what I might have said is, you know what? I just lost a bet with myself. I would have sworn that I was going to see that amazing new quick cooker on your order form. That's where she comes back and says, oh, it was kind of out of my price range. Oh, I get that. Actually, that's why I became a consultant. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to get her as a recruit. But if I can't sell her as a recruit, I'm going to try to, you know, reel her in as a booking. So basically what I tell her, you know, um, Pamper Chef is my drug of choice. Um, you know, is it wrong for me to, to uh, consider my, a double burner griddle, you know, my, my big thing? So um, when I can't get her to uh, consider the business, then I will go over into hosting the shows. And that's where I'm going to tell her, hey, you know, wouldn't you, this big list that you have, wouldn't you love to, you know, maybe get, you know, $200 in free product or in half price items and everything else? And then she's on the fence. She's kind of like, yes, but I don't know. So now this is where she's coming in with her objections. I don't have time. So this is where I put my hostess to work and I pull her into the conversation. So I would say something like, Hannah Hostess, you know, seriously, how long did it take you to pull this party together? I know how long it took her because took her I host coached her through the whole thing. So I know what she did. And so she's going to say something like, oh, <laughs> I don't know, a couple hours at the most, I guess. So now we, we've done that. We've gotten rid of that uh, objection. If someone ever sell, tells you no, don't take no as a no. The question you need to ask is no, not now, or no, not ever. You'd be surprised how many people think, oh, my God, I have to have my show by the end of the week, and I'm busy this week, and I can't do it. So they said no. But if you said no, not now, or no, not ever, it's like, well, I would do a show, but I can't do it until next month. Well, let me sign you up then. Let's pick a date. Um, I don't have friends is another objection. When that comes up, and I do this all the time, I will go, Really? And then I'll just kind of lean in and whisper, did you crash the party? And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I know all of these girls and all of that. So that's when now I put my crowd to work. And I'll just look around and go, you know, hey, you know, and maybe I have two or three girls who are in line or whatever. I'll say, hey, you know, by the end of tonight's show, are you guys going to own absolutely every in the everything in the catalog you want? There will not be one single Pamper Chef tool that you don't own or that you don't want. And they're like, oh, no, I've got like, you know, half the catalog yet I have to buy or whatever. So that's when I turn it around and I'll say, you know what, if, you know, Susie here is considering hosting a show, if I were to whip up Pink Panty Pull Downs and Hot Lava Cake, would you guys show up at her show? Well, of course, they're going to say, oh, Pink Panty Pull Downs and Hot Lava Cake. Yeah, I'll be there. By the way, Pink Panty Pull Downs is vodka and Hot Lava Cake is chocolate. So when you ply people with, with vodka and chocolate, they will always show up at a show. So now she has no excuses. Um, just a couple of tips and tricks through this whole thing. Always keep it light, fun, and conversational. If ultimately she doesn't want to book a show, make sure, you know, be cool about it. Make sure she has your business card and let her know that you're going to follow up with her to make sure she's happy with her products. And I always follow that with a conversation where I say, you know what? I am going to call you in about a month to make sure you're happy with your products. I am not going to hammer on you to uh, host a show or become a consultant so you don't have to block my call. You can feel free to talk to me. So now I've given her permission to talk to me. That way I can start forming a relationship because somewhere down the road, she may want to book. Make sure that you have a selection of shows in your back pocket. And by that, I mean um, something that you can just pull out and suggest. For me, my big one is Pink Panty Pull Downs and Hot Lava Cake, just because I like the, the ring of it. Uh, could be Death by Chocolate, could be Keto, could be Sloop, Soup and Slippers. I like Big Boys and Kitchen Toys. That's basically where you bring the uh, guys in, give them a recipe, throw some aprons on them, and then it becomes a floor show for all the women. Um, wine tasting, beer tasting, couples, thrill the girl. Just always have those things in the back of your head because if I come to you and I say, Kara, would you be interested in hosting a um, soup and slipper show? You know what? We can invite all your friends and you, you've got the whole scenario laid out for her. She's more likely to say yes than if you say, hey, do you want to do a show? I got Thursday open. 
you know, paint the picture for her. Um, I always have hostess kits with me and ready to go. Now, what I do is um, I got a bunch of these folders from a consultant who went out of business. Um, I use them. I know they're kind of pricey, um, but, you know, I got them, so I'm using them. And inside, I have generic, I have catalogs, I have something about the business opportunity, and that's a generic kit for me. Then what I do is I have a separate folder, and inside that separate folder, I have monthly specials. Right now, I've got January through March in here, and then on this side, I've got outside order forms. So now if um, Susie, um, possible hostess, said, you know, Mary, I would like to have a show in February. What I do is I break out a, ho a generic hostess kit. I pull out the uh, February host and guest specials. I pull out some outside order forms, slip in a packet of uh, um, invitations, send it home with her. I just saved myself about uh, almost $7 in shipping. So carry them with you. They're easy to do. Now here's a little bonus. Um, we all get those times when people have, you know, they have canceled or, you know, in the case of Kara right now, she's got what, 18 inches of snow and they're promising her another 13? And she's likely to get cancellations. We are also in flu season. So you're gonna get that call at the last minute. So now basically what you need is you need to either fill a date or you need to book a month or whatever you want to do. Um, I, Pamper Chef is very generous about, you know, all the free products and things that we give our hostesses, but sometimes you simply need to pull a rabbit out of your hat. And this is what I will suggest. You may want to consider something like a pay by day. Basically a pay by day is you select a product that is 25 to $30. Um, when somebody books a show on a certain day, they get that item for the amount of that day. So as I put on here as an example, if you had the salad cutting bowl, which is $25, and my hostess booked her show for the seventh, that's how much she's going to pay for it. Now you use, you put that on the hostess order, you use her discount to offset some of the costs, but you're going to have to eat the remainder. But you know what, if that's the difference between you making your month or not, you're going to be willing to, to suck up a couple of bucks. There's also party for a prize. And what I do with that one is um, I just basically filled out the, the back of this sheet with different little prize things. I think this is free shipping on the host order. And then I just use post-it notes and you pick out your date, pull it off, that's your date, and that's the prize you're going to get. Um, there are other variations of this. Um, as we're going into spring, somebody gave me these silly little uh, flower th pot things. It's got a clip on the back. So, okay, March 1st, you want March 1st? Whoa, you're going to get a free dessert. Um, we're also getting into the Easter season. So you can get these little eggs at um, like Walmart. I think you can get a bag for about a buck and you just put little slips in them and you pick a, a date and you get whatever's on the slip. This is again, free shipping for the hostess. So, um, I mean, there's all kinds of party for a prize type things that you can do. Okay, moving on. I'm going to keep this moving because I got lots to tell you. Okay, events. Um, events will throw you into an entirely new gene pool. Um, you can look for church, civic, charity, how, anything like this. Um, a great place to start looking is on Facebook. And... I know for us, there is a link on our, our group in, on Facebook that Southeastern Wisconsin events. I think many communities or areas, states have similar things, so look for those. Um, this is um, one of the events that I went to with another consultant. And what you wanna do is you always wanna create an open and inviting space to welcome people into your booth. Here's some tips for events. Move your table to the back of your booth. You don't want to put up a barrier between you and the public. Stay off your phone. Get off your butt. I can't tell you. Look at Michelle. She is just nodding like crazy. 
I can't tell you how many times I have taken a new consultant with me to an event and they'll walk in and go, oh my God, why are you getting rid of the chairs? Because you're not there to sit on your butt and play with your phone. You're there to work the crowd. Um, I always offer a raffle prize. It's a way for me to collect leads. Um, even if the event is offering a raffle prize, I also do a, another raffle prize. Um, if there's more than one consultant, you may have wondered why I was using these green slips. If there's more than one consultant, color code your slip so you know who talked to who. So at the end of the day, if you have a consultant that's pink and another one that's white and another one that's green, all the greens go to the green, all the whites go to the whites, all the yellow go, or other colors go to those people. Engaging, engage, engage. I can't tell you how many of them, well, I do, right now I've got um, events on my calendar through December 14th of this year. Um, last year I did 48 events. Um, I can't tell you at those events how many people I have seen that just stand there and they get this stupid look on their face and it's kind of like, I wouldn't approach you. I wouldn't come up to you. I wouldn't, I, I have no desire to learn what you have in your magical booth here. You could be, you know, giving away free Mercedes, but because of the puss you're having right now, I don't want to approach you. So what you need to do is you need to engage, engage, engage. As people pass, make general comments. Oh my God, what a gorgeous sweater you're wearing. Um, that is an incredible bag. Um, love your boots. What are you eating? That looks delicious. Where did you get it? I'm going to have to eat lunch later. I think I need to have one of those. Um, people love compliments. By saying something nice and unexpected, you're drawing them to you. If you ask, are, and then you can say, oh, by the way, are you familiar with Pamper Chef? You've drawn them to you, but with a compliment, and now you're asking the question. Um, I also ask at that point um, if they have a consultant that they know and love. And if they do, then I always make sure, I don't poach another consultant's uh, customers or hostesses, but what I will do is I will let them fill out a slip for my drawing, and then I'll put a little notation on it, and then I will try to contact that consultant and say, hey, you know what, Kara Jones stopped right in my booth today, and she indicated that she might be interested in hosting a show. Why don't you give her a quick call? Um, I play fair, and I think you will find with your business, whether you're new or, or have been established for a while, the fairer you play with people, the better you're going to enjoy your business, and the more give and take you're going to get from other consultants. Um, when they've left the booth, I make notes about what we talked about what they were interested in, and this will just kind of give you an idea. I mean, I make lots of notes on the back. The reason why I do that is because when I am following up with that person or calling them, then I can just say, uh, Kara, you know what, when we met at the um, sports show, um, you had indicated that you were interested in learning more about our quick cooker. I just noticed that it's on sale and, you know, and then you just launch in there. You, you've already formed that bond. So, and also call within 24 to 48 hours, no matter what it is, whether it's a show or an event or whatever, call within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, plan a booking blitz. Have you ever had a personal booking blitz where you were the only member Set a date, set a time, and say on Thursday from eight, 7 to uh, 8.30, I am going to blitz my brains out, and I am going to call everybody I know. <clears throat> Again, contacting your event leads, do it within 24 to 48 hours. If not, you just wasted your time, and you just wasted your money. Now let's talk about picking up the 10-ton phone. I think when most consultants start, and even for some seasoned consultants, you make excuses. Oh, I don't want to bother them. Oh, they won't want a book. Bang, you just prejudge them. Um, I don't want to hear no. I get very depressed when I hear no. Or my favorite, and I used to do this all the time, I've got to get myself prepared to call. So I would sharpen my pencils, and I would clean off my desk, and I would straighten and everything else. So I was, oh, well, it's 930. I can't possibly call now. So don't fall into those traps. If you're having an issue, stop making excuses. 
make time to make your calls and just get over yourself. <laughs> um, making some live calls, what do you say? Now, when it's coming from an event, typically what I'll do is I'll say, hi, um, Kara, it's Mary Weber from Pamper Chef. I've been looking forward to connecting with you since we met at the sports show. Um, at that point, if Kara was there with several friends and the conversation I had to drag them in was, oh my God, you guys look, are, look like you're having such a good time. What I may say then is, you know what, I, you were, you're, seriously, you guys were so much fun, you made my day. I can't wait to do that show we discussed. And I will lead in on each and every one of those. Um, the second I saw that the quick cooker, quick cooker that we talked about was on sale for 60% off in uh, January, I immediately thought of you. Um, I thought of you because I know how you love bargains. Um, I know that you are on the cutting edge of technology and that you want to be the first one to see the latest and greatest tools. Well, I just found out what my new spring summer products are going to be. And I haven't got my catalogs yet, but you know what? You are going to want to get on my uh, cal uh, calendar and book a show. By the way, when I do a drawing at any event, whether they are the grand prize winner or not, everybody gets a prize. And that prize could be a, um, a couple of recipe cards that have my name on it or whatever. But when I make that call, it's like, oh, did I win something? Well, actually, you did win my grand prize, but you did win a prize. Leaving a message. Um, when you leave a message, a, a few years ago, and uh, some of you consultants who have been around a while, you may have remembered um, when Tammy Stanley did the um, speech that we had at, at National Conference. And she talked about leaving your candy outside the candy store. So when you're making those calls, what you want to do is you want to make it short and sweet if you're leaving a message. For example, if I were calling somebody after an event, hi. Um, it's Mary Weber from the Pampered Chef. You completed an entry form at the sports show. I'm sorry I missed you. I'll follow up with you again on Thursday, or you can reach me at, and I'll leave my phone number. Now, the first thing that they're going to think is, oh, my God, did I win? So either they're going to take your call on Thursday, or they're going to call you back to find out if they won. Did you win the grand prize? No, you didn't, but I've got another, you know, a, another prize for you. So now at least you're getting that call back. So don't go in and make the call and say, hi, this is Mary Weber and we met at uh, the sports show the other day and um, I just wanted to call you because you seemed like you were interested in hosting a show. So I thought I would call you and let's get that booked and let's just, because at that point they're not calling you back. I got news for you. If you just dumped all your candy, if you just you know spit up all over their voicemail, they are not going to call you back at all. So, and you do that same type of message strategy for texts as well. So it's challenge time. Remember when I had mentioned that um, people, uh, consultants don't like hearing the word no? Do you know that that's like the best word that you can possibly hear? Because um, there are only a certain amount of no's that you're going to get before you're going to get a yes. So no is no problem. In fact, challenge yourself to call 10, 15, 20 people and see how many no's you can get. There is absolutely no way that you will get 100 no's in a row. It won't happen. So go in with the mindset, tell me no, I dare you. <laughs> now let's talk about being out and about. You always need to be ready to do business. Before you leave, your house, you need to know what your next available calendar dates are because you just never know who's going to say, oh my gosh, you're Pamper Chef Consultant. I'd love to do a show. Doesn't happen often, but you know, if it does, be ready to go. Uh, carry a catalog tote. Wear your logo wear. <laughs> and always have catalogs with you. The other thing is, is that not only do you have catalogs with you, but you keep them in your car. Keep them in your spouse or significant other's car. Um, if you have older kids, parents, everybody should have your catalogs. Because especially if it's a parent, oh, my daughter's a Pamper Chef consultant. Oh, my God, I love that. Well, here I have one of her catalogs. What you need to do is you need to make sure that you keep yourself visible. 
Um, you also need to have an elevator pitch. And I imagine some of you do have an elevator pitch, maybe you don't. But the bottom line is that if I run across you in a store, you're wearing your logo wear, I see Pamper Chef on you, and I say, what's Pamper Chef? You need to be ready to whip off something like that. It has to be 10 to 30 seconds. I can actually do it in 17 words. You wanna know what it is? Pamper Chef's the world's largest direct seller of professional quality kitchen tools for your home. Short, sweet, I just told them exactly what we are, exactly what we do. From there, I can now go out and say, this is what we do. So that's my 17 words. I carry a mini business kit, and you would do well to do this as well. And the reason I started doing this is because a lot of stuff collects at the bottom of my purse. And I don't know if you guys have ever looked at the stuff at the bottom of your purse. There's fuzz on it. Maybe the cough drop came out of the wrapper and it's kind of sticky. And so you pull up this little you know, mini catalog and there's like gunk on it and it's all kind of torn up and crumpled up. And is that the way, what you want to present to someone and say, here, do business with me. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta pull this cough drop off. <laughs> so what I have is I have, now this was actually a coupon thing that Pamper Chef sold a number of years ago. You can certainly get something like this at the dollar store. There's also like the little plastic accordion things that will work the same way. And basically what I have in here is everything that's pictured on the left hand side. I have entry forms, I have mini catalogs, I have a pen, I have business cards, so when so, and it's just sitting in my purse, and it's nice and safe, and everything is pristine. So if somebody says, oh, you know, what's Pamper Chef? I give them my 17 words, I whip out a catalog, and bing, we're ready to go. So, and I also, when I am out and about, the reason I have those entry forms with me is because I want to capture their information. So what I'll say is something like, Terry, you know what? I do a drawing every month of people that I have met while I'm out and about. Would you mind filling out this little entry form? You could be my big winner. So see, Terry's already nodding. She's a consultant and she wants to enter. Terry, you'd only be getting a season's best. It's okay. But anyway, everybody that enters wins because I want to call all those people. So it's a great way to follow up. Here's some other out and about ideas. When you're at the grocery store and you're in the aisle, I always have a season's best cookbook, just kind of, I, I have like a tote that I carry with me. And what I'll do is if I see, you know, people in the aisle, I will whip out my season's best and I'll be looking like this, like, oh, and, and I'll go like right up next to them and go, oh, I'm looking for the, uh, you know, and I'll pick a product. I'm doing this recipe from Pampered Chef and I'm looking for this ingredient. Well, now you've struck up a conversation. Oh, well, I'm a consultant. These are my test recipes. At the checkout, I will divide my groceries, especially if it's a new checker, into two uh, bunches. I need a subtotal on this one because I'm a Pampered Chef consultant. I test recipes and I'm gonna use these products for those test recipes and our tax deduction. When I'm at the bank, I'll often say, well, now my bankers all know me, they all do business with me. But in the beginning, what I would do is I would ask for broken out in a certain way because I'm a Pamper Chef consultant. I've got an event tonight and I'm building my bank and I need these, these denominations. Um, in my in department stores, I poach bridal registry people like crazy. I'm surprised that there are not um, pictures of me with the line, you know, the circle and the line through it on Bed Bath & Beyond and Crate & Barrel because I'll walk in and I'm like, oh, really? You know, the Emperor Chef has much better quality. Here's some information. So I will poach if I need to. Um, also on Facebook, are you guys aware of the whole green dot? If you're not green dotting, start green dotting. Basically what that is is on the side of your screen, Everybody that you know that you're friends with is listed and there's a green dot if they're there and they're live. So you can go in. What I always do though is I always check to make sure that they're not another consultant. Um, and at church, please God, I just need one more booking this month. I just wanted to see if you guys were awake. <laughs> so now let's have some fun. Who is this? You guys recognize this logo? Just nod. 
You recognize the logo? Okay. If I met you out and about, would I know that you're a Pampered Chef consultant? Or are you the best kept secret in town? Self-advertising. McDonald's neither is an exclusive product or they are the best product in the market. I can tell you I used to work for them. What they do do though, is that for over 50 years, they've been spending billions of dollars on advertising. So it's not that they have a fabulous product. It's just that you have seen those golden arches so many times that you can see them in your sleep. You know what you can get there. So that's what you need to do to promote your business. You have to become so synonymous with that Pamper Chef brand that when somebody thinks of Pamper Chef, they're saying, oh my God, I've got to call Michelle Lee. I've got to call Terry Peterson. You need to promote yourself and your business. You need to stop being the best kept secret in town. Again, if I met you on the street, would I know that you ran a Pamper Chef business? Okay, um, Tara, Kara, do you want to unmute them? Actually, go ahead and ask the questions that you want, and they should be able to unmute themselves as they want to answer a question instead of opening it up in case anyone has background okay. noise. So, um, basically, what I'm asking here is, what do I do for a living? Pretty, pretty clear right here. And for Jeff, if you're going to be a walking billboard for your business. You ready? Get them coming and going. I can't tell you how many times I have people had people stop me because I need to read what's on your back. And then I'll turn around and they see the Pamper Chef logo. I got them coming and I got them going. Seriously, how many people do you encounter a day? Whether you're walking around on the street how many people are you encountering every single day in your car? You're driving down the expressway. This is the tag that's on my car. I have literally, literally had people call me while I'm in my car and ask me where I'm going and if I have a catalog. Oh, would you mind stopping at XYZ? I'd love to get a catalog from you. Use your real estate to promote your business. I've even had people stop, because the car's in my driveway, I've had people stop and come to the door and say, are you a Pamper Chef consultant? Can I have some, get a, a catalog from you? So use your real estate. So one day, someone like Jean Jonas is at an event. She was a speaker. Afterwards, in conversation, one of the women came up and was talking to her. And of course, when Jean is someplace, they're like, oh my God, Pepper Jeff, I love Pepper Jeff. So she's engaged in this conversation with this woman, at which point this woman said, who's your Pepper Jeff consultant? And the woman faltered. She said, um, uh, her name is, it's, and here's the ironic thing. I was there and I was standing like 10 feet away from her. But she, um, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, and she goes, it's the yellow beetle pampered chef lady. So now when I go out, what do you think I do for a living? <laughs> Is there any question about this? I'm using my real estate. I'm using my wearables. I'm using the car. You name it. Ironically, I still get a question, do you do Pamper Chef? So now let's get on to this week's assignments. Yay! Um, I have uh, uploaded, or I should say, uh, Kara has uploaded the 100 Knows worksheet that was featured a little earlier onto the Gold Digger Step It Up to uh, Success Facebook group. Um, if you want to download that and print it, and then I challenge each and every one of you to get 20 no's. I dare you to get 20 no's. Go for it. But they have to be in a row. No breaks, no shows booked in between. 20 no's in a row. Um, at the end, let us know how many bookings you ended up with trying to get those 20 no's. 
And then I would love it if you would post a picture on our group page of you in your logo wear or how you're visually promoting your own business. I thank you very much for your time and attention. And you know, we can open it up to everybody. My other question for all of you is that if we were to do a booking blitz sometime next week, maybe on Monday, would any of you be interested in participating in a booking blitz? We can jump in if you'd like. Yeah, you guys are welcome to unmute yourselves. If you cannot wave at me or put a message in chat and let me know and I can undo everybody. I just didn't want to unless you wanted to. Yes, I'd be willing to do a booking yeah. blitz. Okay, absolutely. The only thing is, is uh, dependent on the time frame because I'm Eastern time zone, so. It would be over several days. It wouldn't be like necessarily, you know, one no, hour. Say that it's going to be, you know, from eight to nine on, on Monday or something like that. What we can do is we can maybe block it out for a couple of days and we can put a little challenge out there for you guys. And, okay. and things like seem to be the price point. I'm sure I could find a prize for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so do any of you have questions for Mary? Mary, that was fantastic. Thank you for all your info. I'm sure we're still trying to digest all that. But does anybody have any questions for Mary? It was a great presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you awesome, Mary. Thank, Thank you. you. Very good. I have a question. Okay, yeah. go for it. And then tell us who you are. I am Wendy Spafford, and I live in Western Iowa in Lake City. Been a consultant for eight years. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of quit using my drying slips because I can't get them to fill them out. Um, because I, maybe it's my approach just saying, Hey, I'm having a drawing, fill this slip out. And all they do is put their name. Um, I like the idea of you going through the drawing slip with them and kind of, you're just kind of asking them the questions. Is that what you're doing or? Yes. What I do is I, what I do is I preface it. First of all, one of the things that I will always do is I ask if I have any pampered virgins in the crowd, meaning that it's a person that's never been to a show before. Then okay. what I, do is I will pull out the uh, uh, slip like this and I will say, okay, Wendy, now I want to kind of give you an education in Pampered Chef. Today I'm going to ask you to fill this out, but when you go to future Pampered Chef shows, if the consultant doesn't offer you an opportunity to fill out one of these slips so that you can get in a drawing like you're going to get into tonight, and the reason you want to get into that drawing, Wendy, is because I am going to raffle off prizes worth hundreds of cents. And at that point, you're like, what? what? So now you've made this whole process easy. Yeah. And it's like, okay, so tell me your name because, and the reason I ask you for your name on here and it's also on your order form is because, frankly, half of you write like crap and I'm not going to be able to read what you're trying to tell me. Then I just want to say, okay, what are we going to do? Are we going to do an in-home cooking show? That's what we're doing here tonight. Or you know what? I do virtual online and Facebook shows. Those are a lot of fun too. And you, know, you can get all your friends together. Um, I do catalog shows. I do bridal and gift registries. And I do fundraisers. Then what I will do is I will also go, you know what? Help wanted. I am looking for uh, people to join my team. I'm especially looking for virtual consultants. If you'd be interested in learning more, let me know. It's totally risk-free. Let's do coffee. Then I ask if you are interested in being on my preferred customer page and if you want to be on my newsletter. So I'm getting all of the information right there. Um, a lot of times if they want to be on my preferred customer Facebook page, what I will tell them is please get your phone out and friend me right away because there are a thousand Mary Webbers on Facebook. And yeah. Remember which one I am. Yeah. So you know, just friend me right now, and and we'll do another prize drawing for that. I give away like a lot of recipe cards and a lot of Twix clips and a lot of citrus peelers. So, so does that help? Okay. But make make it a fun thing. Make it a fun thing. What about at events? Do you do the same thing? Because sometimes people, there's so many you can't visit with each of them. Um, but do you try to go through the list? Or, yeah, the drawing slip with them as they're looking at the booth. What I will do is I will um, watch them as they're filling it out. And also across the top of my slip is it says it must be completed to win. 
So if they just put a sticker on it and walk away, even if I pull their name, they're, they're not my winner because they didn't bother filling anything out. Okay. And a lot of times what I'll do is as I'm watching them do this, if they mark that they want to show or whatever, I'm like, oh my gosh, you want to show? When, what are you thinking? Let me put a little note on there. Can I call you next Thursday? Okay. That's like start engaging them right away. Now, here's the trick. If you tell somebody you're going to call them on Monday or Tuesday or Thursday or Wednesday or when you're going to call them, you call them. Right. Right. So do we... Great question. Anybody else? We have to, like, get our own... I'm sorry, I can't hear I you. think Mary has, or Terry has a question. I do. Mary, can you put that, a copy of that in your file, in the files on this so we can see exactly what your drawing slip says? Yes. I'm Thank happy you. To, I'm happy to do that. Now, the reason I have what I have on the drawing slip is because I want to know what I want to know. Okay. Right. Which um, can be changed. I've seen a lot of uh, slips that are like on a scale of one to 10, how interested are you in hosting a show? Your one could be my seven. Your seven could be my not interested at all. So I, this, I, I, the slip that I have is designed particularly for um, events because I have a very short window of time with those people that are coming up to my booth. If I get them for a minute, I'm lucky. So mm -hmm. if they're filling this out, I want to know what I want to know, and I don't want them sitting there thinking, oh, well, am I interested in, am I, you know, a, a two interested in hosting, or am I a four interested? I just, bing, bang, boom, I want it quick. I have another question. Do you use another one for your shows? Nope, I use the same one for everything. Thank you. And then what I do is, um, if I have a group that comes together, I will try to cluster those entries together. So, or I will write on it that uh, Brenda was with Donna and Keely, so that I know when I'm calling Donna, I can say, you well, know, you know, when you Brenda and Keely were at the sports show, you were all together, you had a great time or whatever. Um, you were interested in hosting, and you know, just kind of take it from there. And mm -hmm. that way, I'm also not making three calls to three people. I, you know, I will make three calls to three people, but I mean, I'm not saying the same thing. Saying the same thing to all three people and trying to book all three people on the same event at the same time. Mm -hmm. All right, we've got time for one more quick one because I want to be respectful of your evenings. And if we have more questions after that, we can put them on the Step It Up to Success Facebook page. Anybody else? One last question. All right. Thank you so much, Mary. You were amazing. We look forward to more information from you. And ladies and gentlemen, have a great evening. Go to your uh, nose worksheet and start shooting for those nose. The hands. <laughs> Obviously, it's 9 o'clock at night, not tonight. Um, but go for those 20 nose. And then I look forward to seeing all of your Facebook pictures on our group. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So thank much. you. Very good. Very good. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye now.